action. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's edition of COVID Inspiration with Dio Israel, all the way from Kenya. I want to believe the city of Nairobi, where the central parliament is. I have Honorable John Paul Murigi, a member of parliament, one of the youngest member of parliament in the country of Kenya. He got elected into parliament at the age of 23. He started his political journey, I think, at the age of 19. And also from when he was in secondary school, he had a vision that he was going to run for office. He was going to be a parliamentarian. And he began to walk towards it and walk towards it. And today is a success and a symbol of excellence for young Africans to believe that anything is possible. Honorable John Paul, welcome on COVID Inspiration today. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, my friend Dayo, and everyone who is viewing this uh, program. Uh, more privileged to talk to you, and thank you very much for coming up with uh, such a program whereby whole Africans we can uh, share our own ideas and even let other Africans and even the entire world learn that we, we can and we have that ability despite the age despite what we have but we can make it in leadership arena uh, honorable i had professor thomas um professor patrick lumumba on uh, monday on the show exactly yeah. how i'm talking to you today and it was awesome to have you know an illustrious kenya like lumumba and today we have a younger uh kenyan symbol which is a symbol of hope. Let me let me ask you first, how do young Kenyans embrace your story? What has your story done for young Kenyans interested in politics? I remember when I was elected, uh, I thought that uh, it is only my constituency who are excited because of my election, but this inspired the young people of the Republic of this country, Kenya, and even outside this country, because uh, I was going to go and attend many, uh, many occasions outside there so that I can talk to the young generation uh, to tell them how I did so that I can be elected. But uh, actually, this has uh, really changed my life because uh, I was not uh, aware that maybe uh, I could be the inspiration to many people in this uh, in this country. But uh, currently now, many young generation mm -hmm. are. Uh, they, they normally mm. embrace these positions, uh, position because they understand that uh, they can make it despite uh, uh, of them without uh, them having uh, godfathers. Because you understand that in many political uh, political positions, you have to be having somebody on your side so that maybe you can be elected in any position. But for myself. This position I managed to get it uh, through uh, through the people themselves. I didn't run in any political party. Uh, I was an uh, independent candidate, but the people of the Gambia South constituency mm. decided to elect me. And many people mm. uh, or young people, they have courage and hope that even them, they can make it in, in these positions or political, uh, political positions, despite the ruthlessness of other world leaders who normally believe that uh, if you have money, you have everything it takes to you uh, to clinch these positions. Honorable, I have so many questions for you that I wonder if we're going to have enough time because I want to dissect and analyze your story like I'm in a laboratory. And I want to do this because of a lot of young people from Africa who needs to hear your story. You had no money. You were campaigning on bicycle and you ran as an independent and defeated an incumbent deputy governor in your city. Please tell me, what happened? Why did you go as an independent instead of running under a political party? Let's start from there. Yeah, remember that you, this uh, campaign I started well in high school. I was in Form 3 then when I started uh, campaigning. That is uh, when, I, had, uh, when uh, I was 19. That is the time I started my campaigns. 
And uh, mm. the deputy governor was also, at uh, one time, he was a member of parliament of the constituency, which uh, I'm representing now. And he was deciding to come back so that at least he can continue working for the people of Uigembe South constituency. So I didn't have any resources. And you know, for you to uh, subscribe or for you to uh, get in a ticket in any political party, you 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 have to uh, have some money so that you can register for a membership in a certain political party. So I had nothing, I had no money. I was struggling with my high school, uh, uh, my high school life, uh, had to pay fees there, because even my parents were not mm -hmm. that capable uh, how they uh, to, to bring me up uh, uh, with a lot of resources. But uh, because I had a person in uh, political uh, leadership, I decided that even if I do not have a coin to register or to join any political party, maybe I can run it independently. Because in Kenya, when you wanted to uh, run as an independent candidate, you are supposed to pay only a hundred, a hundred dollars. Uh, so that you can be admitted uh, um, by a registrar or political party, uh, it can admit you to stand as an independent candidate. So I had no other option but to stand as an independent candidate. Something mm. else, many people normally ridicule the young generation because if you do not have any, uh, you do not have money, most of the people does not recognize you. So I was mm. facing a lot of challenges in my constituency whereby most of the people uh, were just ridiculing me because they thought that uh, I was insane, I was crazy. Even because of my age, I was uh, 19 years uh, of age then, and, and nobody who believed that maybe as young person could, uh, could, uh, could ask for votes and be voted in in this country. So when, uh, when I started this campaign uh, uh, at the age of 19, I started venturing each and every village. My campaigns were not based in a town, but I based my, camp yeah. uh, my campaigns in the village, door to door, so that at least I can get to familiarize myself with those large fortune uh, people, and I can even familiarize myself with the problems which the people uh, within those villages were going through. Because many of the campaigners or many uh, many of the political uh, uh, leaders who were vying in those big positions like uh, Jubilee, ODM, PNU party, they uh, they based their campaigns in towns. So I diverted my attention from not uh, uh, campaigning from the towns, but doing my campaigns hmm. in the village level by door-to-door uh, -door, uh, initiative. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. And honorable, you know, you, you did the door-to-door, -door, you did all, this, all the strategies that you have. There are questions that have gone through my head. How were you able to convince the elderly people and the old people to believe in you, a young person, a newbie who had never run public office before, and you didn't have money to give them? That's the first thing. Were you able to also get the youth to follow you? Because sometimes you may even get the elder to follow you, but the young people themselves may actually be the one asking you for money. How did you do that? My friend, Bayo, let me tell you, it was as as hectic to convince the the, the elders, because you can imagine somebody <laughs> like me, somebody in my age, just a age mm. of nineteen. You have never, uh, you have never held any uh, employment position oh, uh, or any employment office, uh, and. Maybe if I can uh, take you ahead after I completed my high school education, I, I, I was used to work in a factory where I used to carry a uh, log or firewood. Uh, which were used to mm. in the boiler uh, to dry the tea. That is my office, which I, I hold where I was being paid 
uh, around mm. uh, around 15 dollars uh, every 15 mm. dollars per day uh, that is the amount of money which I was being paid so then i was mm. uh, when i approached the elders and convinced them that maybe uh, i was willing or i was running for a position of a member of parliament most of them were laughing at me because they thought that uh, maybe i was in dreaming something which was beyond my approach but i remember uh, in most of the churches because i i visited all the churches because i knew that uh, in the churches we have believers there and they can believe what uh, what i was telling them and i was not i was not joking with anybody when i was uh, just asking for the vote because many mm. of the people they think that uh, the young people are jokers and when uh, many people believe that uh, when you are a young person you are a joker and you start joking with what you are you are asking the people uh, to do for you they will not believe you they will not vote for you then the young generation the young people i started convening uh, or convening the meetings in the high school where i was studying something which was mm. against the rules of the high school where i was studying and something which was against the end uh, teacher the principal who was ending the the, the 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 that high school because even the aspirant to my principal was vying was contesting for the member step of uh, again the south constituency so mm. i was just Uh, calling the young people uh, in a laboratory where by i would tell them or give them the ideas which i have most of them were taking my ideas and others were just seeing uh, were looking at it as if also i was not uh, in uh, uh, in good uh, mind or my uh, maybe i was insane uh, mm-hmm. when i was calling mm-hmm. them the, <laughs> come and join me but uh, i remember some few of them uh, decided to join me when i mm. uh, when i was traversing the constituency most of the young people refused to follow me then because they thought that when we when we uh, move together within the constituency most of the people i uh, will not uh, take us serious because we are not giving them uh, something because uh, you Morning. understand in any political in any political uh, campaigns you have to give something to people so that you can convince them that you are fine mm. so most of the young people were not following me mm. they told me to prove to them if i was serious yeah. and they told me if i will bring the certificate uh proving me uh, that uh, or showing that uh, i have been approved to be in the contest which was to take place on 8th august 2017 that is the time they will start joining me and after mm-hmm. after june 1st because this is the time when i took back my my papers i was uh, i was allowed i was given the certificate to certify that uh, i was among mm. the people who are running for the membership of again the south constituency most of the uh, most of the young people and the elders believed mm. they started following me after i saw i i had shown them that uh, i have the registration which is uh, uh, which is admitting me to vie for the membership of gembe south coast okay. yeah hmm. All right, well, one question that i keep pondering my mind is did you go through was there anyone that was dear to you that you had great respect for who looked at you during your campaign and said you're wasting your time or oh, it's not possible and if there was such person after you won the election and became an mp what was their reaction and how did you undo the discouragement for such person <sighs> a uh, true uh, true true tr- tr- i faced a lot uh, of discouragement from many people who told 
me that uh, it was in it was not possible i could not make it uh it's better i i, I vie for mm. simple positions like a uh, member of <laughs> county assembly or even uh, desist from uh, vying for these positions for example the principal uh, of the school where i was studying where i have told you that uh, i was competing with uh, with a husband the principal mm. just told me to step down so that uh, her husband can buy and when the husband mm. advise he will uh, he will uh, give me uh, some work to do but uh, but i refused then there mm. were this crop of people who were telling me john paul even if you win this position just arrest us because you are nothing you are a useless person you cannot uh, get mm. this but i understood mm. that uh, these were the ones to keep uh, to put me off and to discourage mm. me from uh, vying because many thought that uh, i will not finish the race uh, mm. i will not finish the race because uh, the rich guys will buy me on the on the process mm. but i told them to watch me up to a and i managed to go up to it and after i was mm-hmm. elected because i was uh, i i had that belief that uh, i will win this position most of the people who are discouraging me who are abusing me who are telling me to arrest them after i will be uh, after election those guys i i start i started visiting their homes to go and <laughs> tell them that uh, I'm not dangerous I'm not dangerous for them they are, they had <laughs> the uh, opinion uh, that was their uh, that was their mm-hmm. opinion and they earned uh, the right to to say what they said because the constitution of mm-hmm. this country allows them to say anything but I'm mm-hmm. ready to work with them because even some mm-hmm. and um, are in a way to, to to go and hide they are going to hiding places so that maybe i cannot get to them i cannot get them arrested but i decided <laughs> i was able to convince them to come back and to come uh, we work together because i'm not that hopeful i knew that they would not believe in me because i'm a young person but i hmm. would have made it possible to uh, to uh, made this it possible that uh, i'm their leader so let them not fear but come up and they start working with me and those guys uh, let me tell you they came with the brilliant ideas they start, they they, hmm. they, 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 they uh 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 they, they came on my side and believed mm. in me and now we are working with them in my constituency what role did prayer and your faith in god what role did it play in this your in your victory and in this your journey i think the spiritual i think from the start up to where i am currently I would I would not uh, I would not give thanks to anybody else but to, to almighty god because he is the one who convinced people to follow me I remember mm-hmm. when I was going to churches and even when I was hosted in a certain uh vernacular radio station the uh, vernacular radio station got very many followers and many people called uh called uh, the station when i was there and the host told me that uh, that was uh, that was a uh, his first day when many 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 people or many listeners and they engaged him and from that day i started um, i started uh, telling god that if you will give me this position i will do something for mm. you and I, i i remember in the year 2017 i promised god to to go for him a uh, sanctuary or a prayer center where many people can uh, be going to do their prayers and this is a program which is a handaway i have already purchased the land where i could i will uh, build wow. the prayer center because i remember wow. i remember 
on 2nd August 2017, I called pastors and the people of my constituency to go uh, in a certain place within the town of Maua in the Gembe South constituency where we could go and conduct prayers. I remember that day, uh, that, that day, I called God to come and intervene in my elections on the 8th mm. to come and guide my my vote because I knew that many uh, many politicians won't like to tamper with my to tamper with my vote mm. but I asked God to come and guide my vote surprisingly on 8th when we completed the election I didn't proceed to telling center. I went and sleep because I knew that God was manning my vote. The votes mm. were counted, and the following day were the uh, mm. the following day the media guys were the ones who were calling me from the hotel where I had slept to come and uh, to, mm. to to come and thank the people of uh, my constituency because I was already won. But uh, mm. I was not in the Tallinn Center. Those were some mm. of the miracles which God was doing. Then uh, some other miracles which I, I may, uh, which I'm uh, recalling, Dayo, most of the constituents who are more violent, I told God uh, to intervene mm. in all, all places which I visited and even the people whom I, I interacted with, so that when I interact with them, uh, to be cool, not to be violent to me, to listen to me and to get mm. what I'm telling them. And I am sure God didn't exactly that because even if I suffered some uh, some uh, rejection in some places, they were not that mm. severe compared to other mm. politicians who were accompanied by uh, many goals who were protecting mm. them because I was walking mm. alone. Then I communicated to God and asked God to mm. send the uh, so that that wind can convince the people wherever they see my presence, they be cool mm. so that I can talk to them. Mm. And uh, it will mm. Yeah. Mm. So th those you know, are miracles made by God. <laughs> I, I looked at, a, a, as you were speaking, I was taking on first, one of the things you talked about, you said God was manning my vote. In other exactly. words, the spirit Ritual was helping you to undo, uh, uh, undo your physical, and you you believed God so much that He was in charge of the ballot on the day of election. When I said to a lot of people that you were running for office, that about your story, many said it cannot happen in Nigeria. But I don't believe that the word of work of God has a limitation of geographical space. I believe that it can happen anywhere. I believe it and, can happen. Because I remember even when I was talking to the young people of Nigeria uh, in the year 2018, uh, when we met, I remember telling them what God can do, no man can do. So it can happen mm, anywhere. I anywhere. understand that many believe in the power of money, but the mm. power of God is paramount and it can do uh, things which people believe they cannot happen. Hmm. And you know, another thing uh, that amazed me, you, and it's worked for me a lot of times, you made a covenant with God. God, if you give me this victory, I will build you a church. Exactly. And you know, people don't understand the power of covenant. Please shed, us, shed more light to us. Talk to us more about your understanding of divine covenant with God, and now you were able to apply that to your electoral victory. Because many times people think that it's just about effort and having a godfather and knowing somebody. But the power of covenant of God is as instructive as having a godfather. So please talk a little bit about the power of divine covenant and how you made this particular covenant, how you are fulfilling that vow, and you know, all that covenant that you have made with God and the sign. I think it's important that people also have that understanding. Yeah, you know, Dio, there is something which I promised my my God. Because I told God that uh, this position which I'm going to hold, it will be manifested by him and uh, 
he will be guiding me day in day out i remember this was a kind of prophecy in the year 2005 august 13th it was on thursday when we met with my mm. apostle the late apostle a, a pastor on the year 2018 uh, i remember he told that the time i was not eating meat but i was mm. a believer i believed in god and i knew that god can do anything in my life that time i was not taking meat but the uh, the, the apostle during that uh, during the, the the revival meetings the apostle just asked me because i had approached him uh, i told him that uh, i do not eat meat and i would like to eat meat and the apostle told me that i will not pray for you but if you mm. have faith you will be mm. you will get healed I remember apostle asking for me two plate of meat and I took the two plate of meat at the pulpit when everybody was looking at me and up to now I normally eat meat and mm-hmm. that day apostle communicated something to me he told me that mm-hmm. I can see you becoming a very senior person in this country and it came to pass then when this him to pass or when this was to pass i remember all those messages which i was given given by the man of god and i believed that this is what god uh, spoke or what god uh, spoke in the year 2005 and i seen that uh, because this is uh, the god doing I would like also to bless God uh, in my in my leadership whereby I can build a prayer center where many people can be going to pray and when those those people go to pray in that prayer center also in myself I can be blessed then I want to go even if you bless me uh, with this position I will not backslide I will never mm-hmm. I will never uh, uh, go away from you from your one mm. from your uh, from your uh, from my belief in you and I will continue believing in you and this is what I normally do and I said this maybe it is something difficult to many people uh, or many people will not believe this but I said to God if this position will one time make me backslide not believe in you mm. my father mm. i want to i want i want just to join you i want to follow you and i do not want mm. to be drunk in power and backslide because there is a life after this leadership there is entire mm. life and i would like to be there also so those mm. many dirty things which politicians are involved in i normally don't involve myself in that because i am a believer so that is why i'm pushing hand to ensure that uh, i have constructed the prayer center where many people can be going to pray and where many people can be believing in god and i want mm. to structure my faith so that at least it can convert the people of my constituency it can convert the people of this country and even the entire world where many will believe that you can be a politician and at the same time you can um, be a believer hmm. yeah hmm. what was your first reaction when you heard <laughs> that you had won no two i'm going to ask your first reaction when you heard that you won your first experience where you resumed at parliament then i'll go to your meeting with the president let's start with when you first heard that you had won my friend ayo if i can tell you uh the winning the winning uh, i was just uh, <laughs> it was as if i was already aware that i'm um, the leader of the constituency so nothing big which changed in my life i was not that excited that's why even i used public means to go to nairobi where the parliament is 
I used the public means which was being used by my fellow constituents. Mm -hmm. I used a Matatu, mm -hmm. a Matatu Nissan, a 14 seater uh, from my constituency mm -hmm. to Nairobi. So, meaning that uh, there was nothing big which had uh, taken place uh, in, uh, in me. I was, uh, I was just being, I was just uh, as if I was still a leader then. So, I was not that excited. Secondly, when I joined the, the when I joined Parliament, I was thinking that I would experience a lot of difficulties in transacting the business of the House, in interacting with uh, some members of Parliament, because uh, many of Parliament are prominent people. The people at home, uh, their names are all over. Every person knows those people. Some of them have served for two, three times, four times, mm -hmm. and they are still in the parliament. So I was lacking the way I will interact with those people, the way I will approach them. But I thank God because God and made it clear for me uh, how those people will embrace me, how they will acknowledge me. Many media in the country mm -hmm. of Kenya. They end governed all my stories. And when I entered in the parliament, each and every parliamentarian there was waiting for me. He wanted to hear the mm. sound of my story. So I had mm. more difficult. But uh, those guys started helping me even without asking them to help me. So this is one of the powers of the media. We are by the media mm. and informed them and they were ready to help me. I and I, I remember the current uh, deputy speaker, Moshimua uh, on Raboceboy, was the one who was taking me through the orientation, how I'm supposed to behave in the in the parliament, how I'm supposed to dress during, uh, when attending the parliamentary sitting, how am I supposed to compose myself when uh, communicating, when, uh, when I want to ask the speaker something, where I can go for the, for the drafting of the bill or the drafting of the motion, it was the one who showed me how I'm supposed to react on this. Then after that, we had a presidential address in the parliament. The president Uru Kenyatta, together with his deputy president William Ruto, they came in the uh, they came in the parliament. But before the presidential address in the parliament. We had the, uh, the, the, the Jubilee Party and the PG and the parliamentary group meeting, and we were called, even the independent candidate, we were invited there in the state house. I walked there, I walked, I just walked there. I didn't drive to state house, I walked there, but on the way, <laughs> there is a, <laughs> there is a <laughs> member of parliament. I just walked in the in the state house. You can imagine uh, the difficulties you can uh, you can get when you are walking to state house because you know state house is somewhere which is highly protected by the army of this country. I went. I just walked there. Uh, we had the meetings there. After the completion of the meeting, I walked out to the town. A friend of mine um, by the name Kovia, and also drove me to town. Uh, to town. Then after then, the newspaper of the country started writing about my story, how I walked to state house. Then the <laughs> president uh, came to parliament for presidential address. After he addressed the parliament, uh, we normally go out to take a tea and even to greet the president. To, 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 to just have a bite with the president. Then this is the point where the president greeted me and asked me, John Paul, why did you decide to come to my place, uh, walk in, <laughs> and you never uh, approach me to tell me that uh, you, do not have, uh, uh, you do not have any vehicle to come with there? Then I told him, Mr. President, I thought that uh, I will, I, I was to disturb you, and we had very many people there. That's why I didn't say anything. Then the president, hey, asked, 
uh, ask his deputy uh, mm-hmm. to 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 liaise, uh, they liaise together so that they can do something for me. And when we went to another state house meeting at uh, Sagana, the mini state house within the within Nyeri County, mm-hmm. that is where the president called me and mm-hmm. gave me the keys. Something which was very, wow. which was surprising. And the vehicle, wow. imagine the vehicle which president gave uh, gave to me was registered at my name. Nobody can recall that vehicle, even the president himself, even after the power. The president has no power to uh, claim back the vehicle because the vehicle is registered under my name. That is something which he did to me, something which was uh, which I yeah. was not expecting. Favor yeah. of God. Wow, yeah. wow. <laughs> what God can use a man to do from nothing. You were jobless, you were broke, you were a student. And because of the power of determination, of dreams, of focus, you rose to be a member of parliament that is reckoned by, by the and you are not even married yet. <laughs> I, I'm not married, but uh, I thank God for now I have somebody. And soon and very soon I will be showing the world my rape now. <laughs> I understand that uh, uh, they were looking for a wife for you. Was it last year or two years ago? And people were nominating wife for. Just imagine, I was getting very many requests from uh, very beautiful ladies who are requesting mm-hmm. to marry me. But uh, I thank God because God is the God of one. If you believe in God, he normally gives you what you believe in. And for now, I understand that uh, what I was asking God, he has already proven it. Mm-hmm. So let me, let me move away. Um, into the part of leadership. People think that young know, people who get opportunities to serve don't have the skills, the qualities, and they can't get the job done. What are some of your achievements, excuse me, in your two years in office so far? What are the things that you have done that have silenced people who thought that you were not ready for leadership? Yeah, I have. I think one because going to ask helped me to do a lot of things in my constituency. First of all, when I was elected, I and told I and uh, promised something which I would uh, which I could achieve. Because you understand, many of the politicians normally give uh, the unpredictable, ambiguous things which you cannot attain. But which uh, what I give the people of my constituency was something which I knew, even if the government will not provide to me, or if I, 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 I even if I will not get any funding, I will be able to deliver to my people. I remember. When I got uh, when uh, I got in my office, September, I was able to convince a certain company called Twiga Companies to come in my constituency and they start buying bananas then because my people are farmers of bananas. This was hmm. the first achievement in the first month the people were able to access the market where they were able to sell bananas. I had promised the uh, the university, the college, and all tertiary institutions uh, students to be giving them bursary fund whereby I can uh, I was to give each and every student ten thousand. This was something which I had promised, and on 28th. 20, 2017 December, I was able to convene uh, to convene a, con- uh, a gathering of the students from all tertiary institutions, and I was able to give them bursary of 10,000 uh, 10, each. That is uh, around uh, around hundred hundred dollars uh, hundred dollar for each student mm-hmm. in those tertiary institutions in the year. 2018 also I convened another meeting on 29th and in the year 2020 this year mm-hmm. on second also I was able to convene another meeting like this one on that at Maua uh, January that at Maua and also I'm dispersing 
ten uh, hundred dollars to each and every student. I and promised all the Boda Boda operators or the mighty uh, the motorbike operators within my constituency to get them driving license i convened the uh, I, I took uh, around the three 300 young people who operated Boda Boda for classes mm. in the year 2017 2018 they were able to get a driving license and in the year 2018 2019 i was also able to convene around 2,300 Boda Boda operators who were able to receive their driving licenses uh, in various stages where they operated their motorbike. I had promised to, pay, uh, to, to, to construct uh, all the roads which were supposed to be constructed and maintained by Kera, that is uh, Kenya uh, roads and they were able to construct those rooms within my constituency. I had promised to uh, reform the education sector, whereby I sit down with the whole principals and primary school and teachers to, uh, to plan how the, the, the education uh, will be carried out in our schools, how they could be motivated for them to do something for our young generation, and I was able to, 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 to achieve that. And I met with all those young teachers and convinced them what I wanted them to do with uh, all learning institutions within my constituency. I had promised also to build schools or to uh, renovate schools because many of the schools within my constituency, some were built uh, using MAND and those mm. classes were very risky for the young learners and I'm able to, uh, to, res uh, to refurbish some institutions within my constituency and that work still is on progress. I had a promise my people of uh, Egembe South constituency to give them some title deans because their land lacked some registrations or lacked a title deans and I am able to give more than 10,000 title deans and I'm also pursuing some other title deans whereby those guys can have their lands registered under their names. I had promised the people of my constituency to bring a registry center whereby the issuing of birth certificate, the issuing of uh, land registration mm -hmm. or the land title deeds where they can be getting their title deeds and the birth certificate of their kids with ease within my constituency and that construction i thank his excellency the president uru kenyatta because he made this possible for my people of constituency to access this registry it is on progress and it is being built within again the south constituency i and promised the people of my constituency that is again the south to build them uh, KMTC. A KMTC is an institution where young people go to take their studies, their medical studies, and that institution started uh, this month. That program, I have rolled it out and I have given it uh, Kenyan money, Kenyan money that is $250. Uh, to start the, that uh, to start the building of the classes within the constituency i and the promised mm. to connect the people of my constituency with electricity this is the program which we have already rolled out uh, mm. and the president has uh, facilitated me whereby i was uh, i am able to connect the people uh, with the electricity within this constituency and most of the people are loving this uh, job which I am doing. I and promised the people after they elect me, I will not run away from them. I will not uh, close the windows of my vehicle wherever I'm in my constituency. I will interact with them anytime I'm there. And this is something which I normally observe.
Whenever I'm in my constituency, you cannot get my vehicle with the windows closed. You can not see me with uh, my bodyguard, my bodyguard, because in Kenya, a uh, member of parliament, you are given a bodyguard who can who will be protecting you wherever you are going. But when I'm in my constituency, I rarely use my bodyguard. So those were some of the things which have already taken place in my constituency. And I remember I had promised my people to be calling them in public barasas, whereby I mm. meet with the people from various places. They tell me their priorities, which they are prioritized in the in the working plan of the CNDF kitty. The CDF is the constituency development fund, which we are given each and every each and every financial year. We are given a certain amount of money which we are supposed to plan in some uh, uh, to plan for uh, in doing some projects within the constituency. Uh, I convene the public barasas whereby the people are the ones who are giving me what I'm supposed to do in their in their specific one. And I give mm. them that priority. So those were some of the promises which I had promised to the people of Wigembe South constituency. I and, and so far I have achieved all of them. Hmm. Wow, you are an example. I love the way you were reading out all the points. It was from your head. You didn't need somebody to be giving you paper. And those are part of the energies of the youth because we put us all up. We are fresh. Our brains are fresh. We have all the energy. And it's about where we channel that energy, giving the opportunity to show leadership. We're, we're about to wrap up. So I want to give you a chance to give us seven lessons that every young person that wants a career in politics or want to lead in any way or form must know or what they can learn. Or John Paul, please teach us seven things that we need to know. Young people or anyone that wants to go into public service or leadership, in particular public sector leadership. So we'll call it Public Sector Leadership 101 from Honorable John Paul. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. First and foremost, for the young people of this continent, Africa, and even wherever this program is reaching, there is something which we lack or something which we miss as the young people. And this is courage. First of all, wherever, whenever you want to run for any position, wherever you want to own any position, have courage in yourself mm. so that at least you can venture. The second point you are supposed to be determined in whatever you want to do, because many people discourage a young person who has vision and they are determined to deem that vision. So you are supposed also to have confidence in whatever you believe in, because mm. When you have a vision and you lack uh, determination, you cannot attain that, uh, that vision. So uh, every mm. young person you are supposed to have determination because many challenges are on the way and there is mm. no way you can be anybody or any leader in this continent without facing those challenges. And those challenges are meant mm to strengthen our abilities of doing things, our abilities or to measure our strength on what we believe in. So if you have determination, you can conquer anything you believe in in your life. Then let us be going to fearing people because most of the people Fair. in this point was supposed to, to count the first point. We are supposed to believe in God. When you believe in God, God gives you even the knowledge which you do not have. He gave you knowledge to venture in those uh, turbulence of um, uh, turbulence of rejection that the God, uh, God enables uh, any leader to venture to those to, to, to those tablets of uh, rejection uh, whenever 
you believe in him and whenever you feel you want to achieve something in life then let uh, let complicate uh, this notion of you, you must be a known person you must be from all your family you must have uh wealth so that maybe you can be somebody or you can run in a certain position or you can clinch a certain post or you can be given a certain uh, position let us not believe in god the father let us not believe in money let us not believe in the families the royal families but let's believe in ourselves and when we believe in all these things i'm pretty sure that the young people of this continent we are able or we will convert this continent because you can see some of the leaders are dictators some of the leaders are not listening to young people and they remember in this continent more than 75% of the unemployed people are the young generation are the young people are the ones who are not employed so let us focus and through focusing we will be able to achieve uh, or we will be able to convert at this world wow awesome courage confidence god fearing focus vision determination and many more lessons to learn from this vibrant young african leader alaja mati says congratulations honorable john paul Will you be able to cope at this young age? I'm not specifically sure what she meant by uh, will you be able to cope, but perhaps maybe she's asking, will you be able to cope with the demand of the office? Which I have no doubt, but I'm sure you have your response. Please go ahead and respond to that. Yeah, I thank you, Gon, because uh, this is something which many were not uh, what were not able to comprehend that uh, I was able to cope with my office. Most of them uh, thought that I would lose focus on the way, but I would tell my dear sister that uh, I will be here. I'm already able to cope with the life of leadership because this is the third year in, uh, in the office and I have already delivered to the people of my constituency. What is your message to African leaders about engaging the energy of the youth? It is good for every leader, those iconic leaders in the continent of Africa, to believe or to appreciate that uh, the young people have come of it and now we can also do what elders can do. So please give the young people the platform also to showcase their leadership and if we are mission or if we are put in the same measurement with the elders, the young people are the best performing leaders. So do not dismiss us. Just give us leadership. Do not persecute us. Because in some countries, you in some African countries, you can see some young leaders passing. All, all sort of persecutions by the by the big leaders, maybe the president, maybe the prime ministers, by ridiculing the, the young generation who have closed these positions or the ones who have the ambition to become the leaders. Please give us uh, some uh, uh, give us uh, the time also to this our leadership uh, our leadership skills and uh, we normally respect them so even the young people uh, of this continent we have to be respected so that we can show our leadership skills thank you so much the right honorable john paul Murigi, member of parliament national parliament of kenya all the way from nairobi kenya was spoken to us like Ayodeju Kewumi said very inspiring indeed honorable Paul 
I hope that you will be able to grow effectively and inspire a critical mass of youth on the African continent. We're looking up to you. You're a beacon of hope. We're praying for you. We pray that you will not fail. And by the grace of God, that the neutral populace of Africa will be able to rise up to leadership and be able to take their place. This will not be the last time you come on Come Inspiration, my brother and friend. I look forward to more engagement. We're going to bring you back again to Nigeria and hopefully to some other African countries to revive and awaken the spirit and you know power of, of, of leadership in our young generation. Before I go, there's a final question from Bossy Adebayo. It says, congratulations, Paul. Who is your role model and mentor in politics? <laughs> I copied uh, my, my role model was the, the, was the current uh, president of the Republic of Kenya. I remember this happened in the year 2013 when, uh, when they when they were vying together with this deputy president, uh, deputy William Samoiruto, because they were the guys who were encouraging the young people. And when we, when they clinched the purchase of the the polls of the presidency, they they were encouraging the young people. So, because John Paul was not that exposed, I learned from those two gentlemen, that is His Excellency the President Uru Kenyatta and His Excellency the Deputy President William Samoy Ruto. So I would say they were my mentor and up to now in the, in the Parliament of Kenya, I have one and the only Deputy Speaker, Honorable Cheboy. Wow, thank you so much for, for all the comments and the questions. We're very grateful, ladies and gentlemen. Please help me extend our appreciation to Honorable John Paul Murray. Honorable John Paul, I'm so grateful. We love you and we're praying for you. This is where we're going to end the broadcast today. My name remains Dio Israel, and I have my brother and my friend, Honorable John Paul Murray, on the show today. Tomorrow, I'm coming back with three powerful women in education, and it's going to be awesome tomorrow. Don't change the dial. For now, I'm here with Honorable John Paul Ricky. I want to say a big thank you for your time and for believing in us and for sharing your thoughts and your ideas. I'm going to close with Olon Rotoba's comment. It says, I believe the, town, the time is now for the youth to take over. Thank you for taking over in your constituency. We all look forward to taking over in our various constituencies. God bless you, my brother. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you for your time. God bless you. <laughs>